The two parts of any gaming platform are great games and great hardware. As requested, with the PS4 in one corner and the Xbox One in the other, in this 21st episode of Chip Wars, let's weigh in these competitors to see how they might stack up against each other in the battle for the living room. This 8th generation gaming war might be great for cross-platform developers. In terms of chip architectures, the last two major platforms have a lot of similarities which should make porting games a lot easier. Because both the PS4 and Xbox One have AMD's Jaguar APU, first, the cores are clock-gated and support a constant low-power state, the 8GB of RAM supports suspending and resuming games, they both have three USB 3.0 ports, 802.11n Wi-Fi, and Gigabit Ethernet, and thanks to the new x86 architecture, there's now only one console that supports backwards compatibility. And although the CPU and GPU core architectures are identical, because one company made a bet on faster, more powerful memory, it was able to cram more graphics performance onto its system on a chip. So first, let's talk graphics. Ever since hardware accelerated 3D graphics came onto the stage in PCs with the famous 3DFX voodoo cards, and later consoles like the original PlayStation and Nintendo 64, the graphics processing unit has been an essential part of the gaming experience. Building on a previous episode, rendering graphics is a highly parallel job where game developers basically instruct the GPU cores to execute a set of instructions for each element in an array. Here's a reminder. Let's pretend that the data is an actual book and the job is to find a specific word in that book. A CPU is a serial processor that executes things in order, one thing at a time. The CPU always starts at page one and continues one page at a time until it finds the word you're looking for. Now granted, CPUs have gotten so powerful that most people don't notice the lag, but as performance increases, it requires a lot more power and produces more heat. That's why we don't see many four gigahertz serial processors. On the other hand, if the GPU, a parallel processor, had to find the same word in a book, it would first tear out each individual page and then scan them simultaneously or in parallel. So even though clock speeds are relatively lower than CPUs, the GPU can actually complete certain tasks more efficiently using less power. Now YouTube subscriber Nico8P asked, what if the word was the last word on the first page of the book? Parallel processing would have to process each page, while serial processing finds it almost instantly. I wanted to point out this is a great insight. The way developers optimize their code makes a huge difference in the overall performance of any device. Consoles are unique because of the mass market of identical hardware architectures. Even though PCs will always be more powerful, for developers, a large audience of people using identical hardware is a lot easier and more profitable to deal with. But we'll get back to this point later on. Both the Xbox One and PS4 share the same AMD graphics core next architecture. So they will both benefit from a unified memory architecture where both the GPU and CPU address the same memory space. For more details, click these links. Now let's dig into the first big difference between the two. The PS4 will ship with 18 compute units, while the Xbox One will only have 12 compute units. Now while their clock speeds might differ, assuming 800 megahertz, this means the Xbox One would max out at 1.23 teraflops, while the PS4 could handle 1.84 teraflops, or 1.84 trillion floating point operations per second. If this holds true at launch, in terms of raw graphics performance, the PS4 will definitively have better graphics. And unlike the complicated cell broadband engine in the PS3, it will be much easier for developers to use and gamers to see the better performance. The second big difference is the unified pool of system memory feeding data to the CPU and GPU. The great news for game developers is the 8 gigabytes of RAM on a 256-bit bus. But while the Xbox One uses DDR3 pushing 68.3 gigabytes per second, the PS4 uses GDDR5 at 176 gigabytes per second and more than double the clock speed. Basically, the PS4 uses the fastest and highest density graphics memory on the market today. Why didn't Microsoft use the same GDDR5 as the PS4? PS4. How could they let this happen? Sony began designing the PS4 back in 2008. Mark Cerny said that even though GDDR5 was more expensive and hard to get, Sony put a priority on making a configuration that makes it easy for developers to create games. For example, if we use embedded DRAM memory in addition to external memory, we will make developers solve a puzzle to realize the fastest operation. What data should be stored in which of the memories? The low-capacity embedded DRAM or the high-capacity external memory? We wanted to 
avoid such a situation. In other words, Sony learned from their mistakes with the PS3's complicated cell architecture and weaker GPU. So they decided early on to stick with GDDR5. The chipset was always designed to support 16 modules of memory. The early development kits shipped with 256 megabyte modules totaling 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 and the PS4 operating system was probably optimized to reserve about 1 gigabyte of RAM, leaving 3 gigabytes for developers. Microsoft, on the other hand, offered 8 gigabytes of DDR3 from the get-go. I think Microsoft always intended to reserve a good chunk of the RAM to support running both the Windows kernel and the Xbox operating system. At the time, this meant at least 5 gigabytes of memory for developers, an apparent advantage. But since the bandwidth of DDR3 is limited, Microsoft included 32 megabytes of ultra-fast embedded DRAM to bump up the overall memory bandwidth. So during the development phase, Microsoft had the upper hand with double the RAM, but a lower memory bandwidth. Then, at the February reveal, I'm proud to announce that we are equipping the system with eight gigabytes of high-speed unified memory, satisfying the number one developer request for ease of game creation, and also increasing the richness of content achievable on the platform. Sony surprised everyone. Now while it's still possible, but highly unlikely that Microsoft sneaks in some DDR4, this would be really expensive. Even most of Intel's upcoming Haswell chips will probably be limited to DDR3. So in chip wars, it seems that Sony and Microsoft have switched positions this time around. During the previous generation, the PS3 was so challenging that most game developers targeted the Xbox 360 first. Now the Xbox One looks to be a bit more constrained in gaming performance because the PS4 will have a better GPU and more memory bandwidth. Of course, this is all preliminary information, and Microsoft or Sony may still have some wiggle room to tweak some things. But in terms of hardware, if both consoles launch in the fourth quarter, the chip architectures are pretty pretty much set in stone. But hardware is only half the picture. Today, developers either get money from platform owners to make exclusives, or they wait and see which console sells better before optimizing their games. As I hinted before, now it's up to game developers to show off how they can use the hardware to make magical gaming experiences and potentially a lot of money, especially if the platform owners tax the used gaming market. So stay tuned to the channel because I hope to do another comparison video as we find out more about the games coming to either platform, especially this neglected one. And let me thank all the most recent subscribers. The only reason this channel exists is because you clicked that subscribe button. And if you really liked this video, check out these other Gaming Wars episodes where we learned about how Atari, Nintendo, Sega, Sony, and Microsoft won and lost the console wars over the years. I still need to make a video about the Wii U, hopefully after Nintendo beefs up their library of first-party titles. But I have a lingering feeling there's a particular gaming platform that's missing from the picture. I just hope they get some hardware and software out before they miss their opportunity to shine.